So what's it like to be a true beginner at embroidery and stitch your first piece? Let's find out. Okay, so I found myself a beginner. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Jonathan and this is Ginger Cat. Might hang around, he might not. So Jonathan is my husband and we run the business together. So just tell everybody what it is you do. Um, primarily, I run the um, our on, on, <sighs> um, well, I just uh, run the online shop, um, which is www.sarahonfrey.com. Uh, so uh, come and get all your online uh, hand, hand embroidery. No, we'll start that bit again. Well, primarily, I run the uh, shop, uh, which is at www. <laughs> Uh, primarily, I run our shop, uh, so I pack up the orders and uh, send them out to all our, all our customers. Um, I also, um, I'm also that side of the camera usually for all these videos, um, and I run the YouTube channel. Okay, so what we thought we would do today is um, Jonathan's been around embroidery for a long time now and he packs all the orders so he knows what the stuff is, but you've never done any actual stitching, is that right? That's correct, never done anything nothing. at all. Uh, sewn a button on, sewn that, a button that, on. that's about it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so what we thought we'd do is Jonathan's going to have a go at our beginner's kite project. So I'll just show you that here. There we go. So this video is up here. You can see it in the corner. Thank you. <laughs> so do check that out if you want to have a go at this. And this is designed specifically for beginners. So what better way to test it out than with a beginner? <laughs> so Jonathan is going to follow along with the video and he's going to stitch this project and he's going to show you how he gets on. So are you ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's see what happens. Right, so I'm set up and ready and raring to go. I've got a laptop here in front of me with Sarah's video ready to play on it so I can watch that and rewind it and We'll follow her instructions to make sure I'm, I'm getting everything right. Um, I've got her stitch plan in front of me. Um, I've also got the uh, design uh, uh, here in front of me and I have previously uh, traced the design onto the fabric by uh, putting it onto a, uh, onto a window and uh, tracing through with, uh, with, a, with a pen. Um, I have change the colour of the, uh, the, the uh, fabric I'm using. I'm using mint linen rather than the, the light blue linen that, that, that Sarah, Sarah used. I just wanted, wanted to uh, ring, the, ring the changes. Um, talking of ring, ringing the changes, I'm using uh, going to use red and blue leather uh, rather than the silver and uh, gold leather that, that Sarah used. So fancy, fancy changing things up a bit. Um, I'm going to use um, silver plated twist one and a half instead of the uh, Rococo that uh, Sarah used and also use um, three ply twist bright blue rather than the uh, the one of the Rococos that she used as well just, just change things up, up a bit. I'm not going to use any any gold spangles I'm just going to use silver spangles in two mil and three mil. Uh, I'm going to use the same silver coloured metal pearl wire that she used. Uh, grey thread and I've got um, blue and red strings for the uh, for the leathers because I'm using different colours than she used. Um, right I've now got to according to the video I've now got to cast all this to one side and get this fabric mounted up on some stretcher bars. Right there it is now all done all nice and tight so I will now refer to the video and uh, find out what happens next and then come back to you. Right, I've um, started cutting out the paper templates, just finishing that off now. Um, got to make sure they fit on the design that I drew on earlier. Well, that one does. I guess it'll be Looks a bit small to me, but I guess it's okay. Now what I do is get yeah, that's good enough. Um, get that on my leather, and um, then cut the leather out. Right, the instructions 
tell me now to use the paper templates, which I've just cut out, to cut out the kite pieces from the leather. Um, the backs of the leather, uh, the red is red and the back of the blue is black. So what I've got are um, a black pen to mark the rear of the red leather and a white gel pen to mark the black rear of the blue leather. Um, I also have um, a pair of tweezers and a pair of embroidery scissors to, uh, to cut out the shape. So let's get on and, uh, and cut out the, oops, bent that piece of paper, let's cut out the, uh, the shapes. I'll start with this one in the top right hand corner um, and let's see how we go from there. So I need to flip the template over onto uh, onto a bit of leather. Shuffle this out of the way. Um, and let's just carefully mark around here. And then using my good scissors, cut to the inside of the line. That looks good. Now let's see if it fits. It's a little bit wonky, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll just tidy that corner up there. Uh, I reckon that's okay. Yeah, not bad for a first effort. Um, crack on and do the other three now. Okay, so I've uh, cut the other three pieces. Um, just check that they fit okay in their allocated slot. And they appear to do so. like that. So there we go. That's that done. Now I um, need to refer to the, the video again. What we need to do now is stitch the leather onto the kite. Um, the first piece is waiting there for me. Uh, I've previously threaded my needles um, with the with red to, to match the, the red leather. And what I need to do is start at the top, have a waist knot over here. And two tiddly stitches in the middle. Got to get your aim right, haven't you? And then come up on the inside of the line in the corner, sort of about there, I reckon. Yeah. And then go straight down into the corner of the leather. Oops, it moves, isn't it? And then come up in another corner. 
there and this holds the piece down sort of like that Right, so now that's sort of held down. I can just get stitching all, all the way around the outside of it. Um, now, I didn't count how many stitches Sarah used. Um, didn't look too many. So, but maybe half a dozen down the long side. Ooh, that's a bit ropey. Let's use the let's use the malore. I can't see the needle. <sighs> Tired old eyes. And one final stitch. Oops. Right now, I need to get the other pieces in, um, starting with the other red one here, so I can come up in the corner traveling across the back of the fabric um, and come up in the corner there and start to get this piece of red leather down. I'm uh, coming up to my last couple of stitches um, and what have I learned from this? Well firstly I've learned that it's difficult stitching with stinky cat in the way um, even though she's very good company secondly man broidery is a young man's game right, the older you get <laughs> the worse your eyesight gets it's not so it's not so easy um, especially when the light's bouncing or shiny leather um, but hey ho i've struggled through um, got there, got there in the end. Um, the other thing I've learned is that actually the leather's quite pliable. It kind of stretches a bit, and um, I, was, I got more confident as I went round. Was able to sort of pull it around a bit and and get it to conform to shape more than I more than I thought uh, I'd be able to. So uh, that sort of rather nervous, tentative start was. Uh, was was unnecessary. I could have just cracked straight on and um, and just piled through as I as I did with the other three triangles. So um, anyway, that's that's the four leather squares done and in place. And now I need to uh, watch the video because so I think the next thing is the the cross of pearl pearl down the middle. I believe. So I need to watch the video and see how I do that. Okay. <laughs> so it's a new day and I've spent my time wisely by 
watching the video um, overnight. Um, so I know what to do. Um, I've got to stretch the pearl wire um, so, so that it's ready to stitch up the middle of the kite. So hopefully I don't overdo this. So I need to give it a tug to straighten it and to give a bit of space for the thread to go down. Give it a tug. That looks about okay. And then take the unstretched end off there. Um, then I need to get my thread and my beeswax. Do some waxing. Go. Put a knot somewhere in there. A uh, couple of starting stitches or something. Form a loop. Tap my finger. So a couple of stitches at the end. Oops, oh dear. Oh, that missed. Oh well. Another one. That's more like it. All right. Fold it with a mellow. And then work my way up. Um, Measure twice, cut once. Yeah, I got that done. Um, what are the problems? Um, it's gone a little bit skew with in the middle there, so so that's that wasn't the greatest. A um, little bit, a little bit wiggly there, but I'm happy with it really. Um, so now we've got to get on and put the um, 
the outside twist around. I'm using twist instead of Rococo for this. So now we'll um, reposition the camera and I'll crack on with the, uh, with the, with the twist. So here's my blue twist um, instead of, instead of Rococo. Um, so it's going to go on these kite tails and I've got to, um, first of all, put a starting knot somewhere out of the way on this, de this design line. Uh, come up a couple of starting stitches. Oops. There or thereabouts. Um, like that. Leave a bit of a tail to be plunged through later. And it doesn't matter which side you come up and which side you go down until you get to the kite where it doesn't, when it does matter. So every few millimeters, what, five millimeters, I guess, isn't it? Something like that. I've got to oops, come up. Go over the top and work my way all the way up to the all the way up to the kite. So it looks fairly straightforward. Let's see if it is. Okay, I've reached the bottom of the kite. Um, the first immediate problem is my leather is a little bit shy of the line there, I think. So um, I'm not sure that the blue twist is going to fill the gap adequately. Might do, might do, but we'll see. Um, I've spotted something else along the way that um, I think that pearl wire might be a little bit too too long. Um, so I think I might have to wing it when I get there. And I think that one there is definitely too long. Um, I've had a little look and the stitch comes to about there, so I've got a couple of coils that, that, that aren't stitched down. Um, so I'm going to trim that to length, and I'll do that now. So I can push it up from the other side and see if I can nip off a couple of coils without. without snipping through the stitching. Yep, succeeded in that. So I've trimmed that one to length, but this one I can't trim it because the the final coil there is the one that's stitched down. So if I if I were to nip that off, I would undo all my stitching. I don't want to do that. So I'll just have to wing wing it with that one. Um, right, where's my where's my needle? There it is dangling. Right, so on this, when we get to the kite, we have to make sure we come up on the outside and go down on the inside. So, we should, not so easy to see, but there we go. Might use the malore here.
I've come down the other side and I think this side's a whole lot better than that side. Um, not sure why. It might be because I could just see it whole, a whole lot better coming down coming down this side. I don't know if that's something to do with me being right-handed and just being able to see it better or maybe I was just a bit more practiced coming by the time I got around to this side but um, I think I think that's a whole lot better that side um, might just be might just be fluke but um, I think this left hand side all gappy and ropey and to my eyes that right hand side looks quite snug um, anyway happy with that happy with that now I'll continue down the other tail I've put the middle tail in with silver plated twist one and a half so now it's time to plunge the three tails uh, to the other side of the fabric uh, ready to tie off uh, so I have my cruel needle with my buttonhole thread um, so let's have a go at plunging Okay, that'll do. Having plunged the tails through, it's now spangle time. Sarah's favourite part, my least favourite part because I'm really not a fan of spangles. Um, right, so we take the three mil spangle. Oh, well, first of all, having travelled my thread that I previously used to um, couch down the uh, middle silver tail. I've travelled it up the side of the up the side of the uh, kite up to the corner. Um, so I need to get a three millimeter spangle on the um, thread it down the thread it down over the needle down put it on the side of the kite for it to live there so it lives its life like a spangle in the wind and that goes there and we'll go down one side oh, it's a bit um, cockeyed but Matters. Sold that in place. Up the middle. Down the other side, I think. Is it up the middle again? I think. Because then we get the two millimeter spangle. How the heck do we get up there? There we go. Put on the needle. Let's have a twist. 
tweezers back. I have a feeling I've got all this wrong, but what the heck. Right, I've re-watched the video and I'm going to do it better this time round. Um, so I brought the needle up away from the, the point to leave enough room for the first spangle to get on there. So that's better. So that gets on there. like that. And then the next stitch goes from the outside to the inside. Somehow. then come up again put my little spangle on there little spangle won't fit over the eye of the needle. Let's choose a different one. Well, that's neater, I guess. Right, one more to do. Well, that's all my spangles done. Um, got there in the end, took a bit of getting used to, but um, figured out the which to come up the outside and down on the inside. Got it, got it all sorted in the end. Um, don't look too bad, I suppose. Now we need to uh, take take it out of the table clamps, turn it over, and finish off the uh, the reverse side I think. I've turned the piece over and now it's time to tidy up the back and tie down whatever it's stitched down the ends of these uh, twists that have previously plunged um, through to the back. Uh, I'll just do this this top one and then do the others off camera. Right let's have a go at doing this. Start it all off.
Right. Oh, that's close enough for me. Right, I'll do the other ones, the other three um, now and um, turn it back over and let's sort of um, all laugh at the finished result. Cleared everything away, got myself a well-deserved coffee. So uh, let's ask Sarah back in and let's have a little chat about this whole project. What have you been up to? You know full well what I've been up to. <laughs> can I have a look? <laughs> you can have a look. Oh, oh, I really like it. I do. I do really like it. You've never done any embroidery before. As a piece of gold work, I think that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you find it? Honestly, no, not honestly. <laughs> <laughs> dishonestly. Yeah. Dishonest. Yeah. Um, well, leaving aside the difficulties of uh, doing it under cameras, yes, uh, which was not easy. Um, it's not easy doing it. Under those rigid, rigid conditions. No. Um, I appreciate the difficulties you face. Um, <laughs> but it's not, it's not easy, is it? It isn't easy. It, it's not easy at all. No. Um, it, it's, that was awkward, really awkward, not being able to position it um, as, I, as I would have liked to have liked. I would like to have been able to move it around mm. to be able to see things more clearly, get things in my, in my line of sight better. Um, uh, the major difficulty I faced was not simply not being able to see clearly enough right. um uh, I, now that's uh, so I appreciate other people we, we hear we read lots of comments on YouTube and we hear read lots of emails from people struggling um we you get mm. you get lots of questions about magnification yeah. and I okay I understand it all now because yeah. um the older we get the worse our eyesight gets and I, I so I fully understand the difficulties people people face now doing embroidery um, with uh, less than perfect eyesight um but all those difficulties aside um yeah it was actually it was all right it was it was it was enjoyable um it was a bit a bit of a challenge in places um i think the key to this project for me was uh cutting the leather to shape accurately okay. um it went it started off a little bit um uh, inaccurate and haywire um so i think anyone else doing this for the first time pay mind to getting to getting that accurate to start with um it is all about preparation i think the the more you prepare the better the end result so that is worth noting that point actually, yeah so. yeah it's all a bit it's all a bit gappy in places the uh around around a couple of the, the, the leather triangles um yeah. Well, well, yeah. Hey ho, hey ho. Yeah. But um, you know, not so bad. Um, I think it's important as well to get something finished. Um, see the things that aren't quite right in it, but carry on anyway. Um, and finish it. Finishing is really important skill to learn, and then move on with the next piece. You can think, right, well, what did I do last time? I'm going to pay more attention and do it better the next time. So, really important lesson to learn that. I think. But frankly, it's um, it's not challenging once you get going. It's uh, it was okay. <laughs> well, well, no, it was it was it's straightforward. Uh, I went out of sequence a few times, and um, I didn't follow your instructions to the letters, you know. <laughs> but hey, you know, <laughs> right. it's not new news, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. Jonathan said it's not challenging so if anybody wants to challenge Jonathan to do something else because obviously that wasn't hard enough um, then do leave a message below and let us know what you would like to see him do next well you put text in yours I did are you going to have a go at some text if there's demand to see, to see me put text in it who so knows if anybody, if anybody wants to see Jonathan again um <laughs> doing some easy embroidery um then let us know below and maybe he'll make another appearance um if you've liked this video um do give it a thumbs up 
um, subscribe to the channel as well. You can click the little notification bell. Where does that appear? Down here somewhere. Down there somewhere. Down there somewhere. Yeah. Um, and do leave us a comment. And don't forget to check out all our other videos as well on lots of gold work videos um, and loads of other stuff as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this little foray into, <laughs> into something a bit different. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>